Hey, what up, everybody? Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of this fine podcast. This is episode number 178, 178, entitled The Three C's of Recovery. Welcome back to the program. Welcome back to the show. Little nod to Andy Hunter from Adricos. This is a guy that I admired for quite a while, just a good dude, and he left us not too long ago. So every once in a while, I'll throw that in as a bit of an homage, because that's how Andy Hunter used to start his show on YouTube. Welcome back to the program. Welcome back to the show. Okay, so today, the three C's of recovery, courage, competence, confidence. We're going to talk about that. I did this as an Instagram post a few weeks ago, and uh, it went over really well. And I've gotten so much feedback on it where people have been sort of adopting this as a bit of a, uh, a guide post or, or, or a way to sort of guide their recovery and frame their recovery to understand what the process kind of looks like. So I said, you know what? This deserves a podcast episode. So here we are. We're going to talk about the three C's of recovery today. What are they? They are courage. That's the first one. And that's the one that everybody hates because that's the part that you need in order to intentionally do scary and difficult things. Courage. And then there is competence and a feeling of competency, which is if you are really struggling right now is a thing that you probably don't feel, if, especially if you are feeling like I can't handle or I can't cope or my anxiety and panic or my emotions will be too much, They'll, they will overwhelm me and I won't be able to cope. That tells me you do not have a, a high sense of competence about yourself, your ability to handle these things. And then the third one is confidence, which kind of, these, these things all lead one after the other, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. These are three C's. So one does lead from the other. The first one, which is, I know the one that everybody hates. So hang in there because everybody wants to get to confidence. I know everybody wants to get there. But and we're going to talk about this in another podcast episode and in different forms of content on social media very soon. We're going to talk about putting the cart before the horse. So everybody wants competence and confidence first, but the competence and the confidence only come as part of the recovery process. You have to actually do the things and then those things sort of follow along, unfortunately, right? So that sucks. It's not, it's not fun that way, but that's the way it is. So in order to get the ball rolling, to head towards a feeling of competence, and, and a sense of confidence is that you have to exhibit the first C, which is courage. Now, here's the big misconception about courage. And, and I, I'm surprised at the number of people who still don't understand this. Courage does not mean that you are not afraid. No way, shape or form does courage mean not being afraid. This has nothing to do. I want you to strike the word fearless from your, from your vocabulary because none of recovery is about being fearless. Fearless indicates somebody who just he can squash their fear and run into the fire anyway. This is not that in any way. Like courage means that you are afraid, but you act anyway. And I know I've talked about this, I've written about this, but I'm going to have to keep saying it because I'm surprised at the number of people that say, I'm not courageous. I'm very, fe I'm, I'm, I'm just afraid. I'm not brave. I'm always so afraid. Right. But brave people are afraid. Like courageous people are afraid. Courage is not not being afraid. And sometimes it's really a little bit frustrating and also very heartbreaking to see how many of you feel fear and then instantly declare that the presence of fear is a deal breaker. Like I cannot handle fear. So, you know, as, to kind of tie some of these things together, to tie two of the C's together, some people feel that as soon as they feel fear, they have to hit the eject button because they don't feel competent in their ability to handle fear. So therefore they think that they have no courage. But really, I believe in my heart that everybody has courage. I really do. And I think part of it is understanding, really, that courage doesn't mean not being afraid. And I, I truly believe that if you are going to insist to me, no, I'm not brave, I don't have courage, I'm not courageous, I think it means that you're just saying, well, but I feel, see, I can't stop this. I, I can't stop the fear. Well, no, you, you won't stop the fear. Like, you can, courage doesn't stop fear. Courage is acting even though you are afraid, right? So the first thing you have to do is, and I understand you're going to argue with this, like, but it feels so dangerous, but it feels so real. But not me, not any of my collaborators, not Claire Weeks, not Dave Carbonell, not Marty Seif, not Sally Winston, not any of the people that, that you are taking your advice from. No one is ever telling you to do a dangerous thing, right? We would all be like kind of sociopaths if we were telling you to do dangerous things. 
So you're going to have to trust that even though you have to do scary things and difficult things, these are not dangerous things, even though they feel dangerous. But since they feel dangerous, this is where courage comes into the equation, you will have to find and display courage. Without that as a starting point, this thing starts to get really frustrating really fast, unfortunately, and I see it happen all the time. And, and it, to a certain extent, it happened to me too, a little bit. Like I had starts and stops in my recovery, because I kind of resisted that, right? So it's totally natural and normal to say, I don't want to be afraid. Nobody wants to be afraid. No human being wants to be afraid. I mean, maybe there are outliers that sort of get a charge out of being afraid. But for the most part, we don't want to be afraid or uncomfortable. We want to feel safe and settled. So I get that. But courage is such a big part of this. Like you don't get to the other two C's, competence and confidence in your recovery. If you aren't willing to kind of find that first C, which is courage. So when people ask me again and again and again, okay, but how do I let go? But how do I surrender? But how do I float and accept? How do I willfully tolerate? Whatever you, the words you like to use that resonate with you, but how do you do that? But how, how, how? And after a little bit of back and forth and you talk about some, some philosophical stuff and some you know framing it and thinking about how to go about it and a little bit of technique here and there, but in the end, it does come down to, yeah, you're gonna have to do it scared. Like, so courage in our, in our conversation means, you're going to have to do this scared, at least to start. So you need a lot of courage, but for a short burst of time in the beginning, right? And then trust me on this, you do not have to be superhero brave. And this is a thing I said, like, I believe in episode two of this podcast, which is years ago now in 2014. I think I said this, I, the episode I think is called courage. Literally, it's entitled courage. And you don't have to be superhero brave for the rest of your life. That's not how this works. This, I'm not saying that you are doomed to a life of, of just constantly pushing through terror and fear and just being courageous to get through every single day. That's not how this works. But you will need to be courageous in the beginning to get the ball rolling. And as you begin, begin to learn the lessons of recovery and understand that like, oh, the bad thing never really happens. I can handle panic. I can do it. I can get through this. It doesn't hurt. I don't have to fear it. Then the fear begins to recede as a happy side effect of that. But it is not the primary goal and you cannot stop the fear before you recover. So a lot of people get stuck like they don't know where to start. I can't get going here because I, I get afraid. As soon as I start to get in the car to drive, I'm afraid. So how do I do this? Do it scared, that's courage. So the first C of the three C's in this episode is courage. You're going to have to find it. You're going to have to display it. And everybody you see around you in the community who is having success and moving forward down the recovery path, maybe sharing their wins here and there, and, and they're, they're actually making progress. Every one of those people had to find and display some courage. And I'm telling you right now, if you look back at some of the success story episodes that I've done in this podcast, they're, they're out there. I've done at least 10 of them. Almost every one of those people will tell you at some point that they thought they couldn't. So everybody starts thinking, either I don't want to, which I totally get, or no way, I'm not a brave person, I'm not a strong person, I can't do it. So many people start that way, but then they take the leap. Okay, I, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna trust these people, I'm gonna try it. And then they start to see like, oh my God, I, I can do it. And they begin to believe in themselves as they go. But as far as courage goes, I know you think that's a deal breaker for you, but I promise it is not. But you're gonna have to find someone use it to get the ball rolling. So the first C is courage. Courage is what allows us and propels us to do these hard and scary things that we have to do as part of the recovery process. So you're not going to start to feel competent to handle anxiety or panic or big emotions. You won't feel competent unless you begin to do the recovery things, like go into them, go toward them, willfully tolerate them, surrender to them. And courage is what enables us or propels us into those activities. So courage then leads to having these experiences where we confront the fear and we navigate through it as opposed to running from it or trying to go around it or stop it from happening. So we use courage to move through the fear. And through that, we learn through repeated positive outcomes. And the positive outcome is it didn't kill me. I didn't go crazy. I didn't go insane. I don't care how much it felt like I was going to for the thousandth time I was sure I would lose control and I didn't. Right. So those repeated experiences that are carried by courage lead us to start to build a sense of competence. So courage leads to competence, which means that you start to understand little by little, you begin to believe, I can handle this, I can handle these things, I can get through this. 
It seems really dicey and choppy and sketchy at first. But as you repeat these things, you start to get more and more competent, you feel like I can do this. I am able I have the skill set, I have the strength, I can do this. So courage leads to feelings of competence and an elevated sense of competence in your ability to recover and your ability to handle these things that have pinned you down and crippled you for so long. That's a big step. That's the second C. It's an important C. But what happens if we stop with that, right, if we stop with the second C, which is competence, we run the danger of partial recovery, and being stuck sort of in that acceptable zone. So one of the most common questions that gets asked, and one of the most common issues that comes up in this community, and I know you guys have heard it, is the question, but what if it comes back? But what if it comes back? Or you'll hear somebody talk about setback and setback. I was doing so great. I didn't, I haven't had a panic attack in, in two months. I had a panic attack this morning, and it's a huge setback. I'm back to square one. So where does that come from? So if we look at it in the in the uh, context of the three C's, the courage propels us toward feelings of competence, because it allows us to have those repeated experiences that teach us that we are competent. But what tends to happen is we get confused and we think, well, I learned to walk around the block, I learned to stay home for an hour, I learned to go to the mailbox, I learned to drive three interchanges on the on the motorway or the freeway, or the highway exits. I learned to do these specific things. I learned to go to the supermarket. I learned to do the school pickup run. I learned to sit at my kid's basketball game for an hour. But you think that those are specific standalone things because now if I have to do something that isn't those 10 things that I've been practicing, I think I can't do that. So anytime something comes up that isn't in my recovery repertoire already, I think it will be too much still. It will be too much. And then if those feelings come back, when I try one of those things that oh, I haven't done that yet, I'm not ready for that. Then if I don't have confidence, then I'm going to consider like, oh, see, I was afraid again. Oh, I had the symptoms. I had panic. That's it. I'm, all bets are off. Square one setback. That is not a, a courage or a competence problem. That is a confidence problem. So confidence only happens when you continue to feed yourself those repeated experiences and you make those you take those experiences and those lessons you learn in the frozen food section of the supermarket, and you intentionally forklift that to a weekend away with your family. So you have to take those lessons that you learn in the specific recovery tests that you're doing. And you have to push past the acceptable zone and keep going. You have to keep going. So now I learned how to drive on the highway for four exits. So now I'm going to have to drive to my family's house an hour away. I'm going to have to forklift that experience into this wider context, a bigger context that I think is outside my zone. And so competence, courage propels us into the exposures, into the hard things at, at the micro level, the, the event level, the individual task and behavior level. Competence is what we build as we do each of those tasks, if you will. We become competent at those tasks and our ability to move through fear and anxiety and discomfort in those specific contexts. Confidence is what comes when you keep going and you start to push those boundaries and you don't stop at just the supermarket, the school pickup line and two exits on the highway. You keep going. So when you discover, when you discover that like I can take the highway driving and I could transplant that and I could do the weekend away with my partner in the next town over or I could do a day at the beach, or I could do vacation, or I could do a cruise around the world, or I could change careers or buy a new house or move to a different country, whatever it happens to be. That's when confidence comes into play, right? So one of the things we're going to talk about more and more is the width and depth of recovery. What we're looking for is not a focused recovery. We're not, recovery is not, I learned to go to the supermarket and shop and run my errands and drive my kids around. That's not recovery. We want recovery to be broad and deep so that those experiences get spread across multiple contexts, all the contexts that life has to offer us. And then we start to build confidence. So competence in this context is doing these courageous things has taught me that I can do each of these things. Confidence means, oh, I know if I can do this thing, then I'm pretty sure I can do that thing, even though I haven't before. So that is where confidence comes into play. 
And this isn't perfectly linear. Do not get me wrong. All the time you're building, you're flexing your courage muscle all the time when you do these things. You're building competence in each individual test that you do on a minute by minute, day to day level. You're building confidence in certain areas, but you're lacking in certain others. So it's not a straight line, right? This isn't like, well, first I have to build my courage, then I have to. It kind of is like that. But if you look at a granular level, you'll see that this is all happening at the same time all the time. But what we really care about in terms of the three C's is understanding what courage is. I'm going to have to do things when afraid. And I'm not a failure because I'm afraid. Courage is acting even though I am afraid. We have to understand that first and do that and start to do those things that we that we are resisting doing. We build competence in the repetition of doing those tasks. And we feel like, oh, I can handle that task and that task and that task. Confidence comes when we push those skills into other other areas further outside of our comfort bubble. And then we build a sense of confidence that says, oh, since I can go away for a weekend with my my partner, that tells me that I can also take this new job that I've been really wanting to take because I hate my job. See where that goes? So I, I'll wrap it up with my own, like an illustration from my own experience. One of the very last things that I would say I, would ha I had to do in my recovery was to fly. Now, I, I've made no bones about the fact that I've never been a great flyer. I don't love to fly. I still don't love to fly. I've gotten way better at it, but I'm not a huge fan, right? So I hadn't flown in a very, very long time. And prior to like the last time the wheels fell off for me with anxiety, I hadn't flown for many, many, many years. And I was a terrible, anxious, afraid flyer when I did. So when I went through the recovery process back in 2008 and 2009, by the time I got to the end of 2009, I would say I was 95% recovered. But there were things that I hadn't yet done. Flying was one of those. And honestly, I had no reason to fly for many years after that. So I only started flying maybe in the last four or five years again that I had to start flying a lot. And I've, I've done a ton of flights since then because I had to for my business. So the courage was the first things that I was doing back in 2008, 2009, getting up every morning, brushing my teeth mindfully while in a panic, getting in the car, driving literally for 20 minutes in a two block radius of my house. Okay. That was, I had to display courage to do that. And then I started to build competence in that task. Like, okay, I can do this now. I can drive around the block. I can drive to the kids' elementary school. I can do this. I could be in the car for 15, 20 minutes by myself. Then I started to learn, yeah, I could be home for 20, 30 minutes, an hour by myself. But then I had to keep pushing it, right? So I took that competence in those initial tasks that I had to find my courage to do and push them into bigger and bigger things. I don't really want to go to the mall because I don't, I don't like the mall anyway. I'm not a big shopping guy, but I am going to have to go to the mall again and again and again. I don't really feel like doing anything on this Friday night with nothing going on, but I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to drive all the way into like Nassau County. If anybody lives on Long Island, that's a little bit further from me, like on the way toward New York City. I don't have to go to the city, but I'm going to go into New York City right now because I, I have to. I have to push that. And so pushing, 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 which is harder to do on a practical standpoint. I get it because those aren't things you could do all the time every day long. They're, they, they take time and effort. You got to plan that stuff. But I did it every chance I could. So I forklifted my local short term and mid term and mid level exposure experiences, which I, I wrote about in the anxious truth, like categorizing that near term, uh, near term, mid term, long term goals. So I took my my near term and, and mid term exposure goals and recovery goals, and I intentionally spread them and forklifted them into bigger things outside of my bubble. And I kept doing that and doing that and doing that for a year or more. Now, it wasn't that impactful on my life because I was able to live 80% of my life just fine without doing that, but I kept going. So if I fast forward years later, and now I have no choice, I have to start flying. I actually had not only, well, I, I was displaying courage in my recovery. So now, I mean, I always knew I was courageous, to be honest with you. That's not something I personally doubted, but now I'm just absolutely 100% sure of it. Like there's no doubt in my mind. But I took the competence that I had built with those early exposure tasks. And I built my sense of confidence so that when it was time for me to start going back into New York City, for instance, for various reasons, social pleasure, business, whatever it was, I was nervous because I hadn't done it in a very long time, but I wasn't terrified because my confidence level was up. And I said, well, I even I haven't been to the city yet, but I know I can do that. When it came time to fly, that confidence that came 
from building courage to competence and spreading, 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 not stopping, made it much easier for me to tackle what I thought was the last challenge. And as it turns out, it wasn't that much of a challenge because I had built that third C. My sense of confidence was way up here. Like I've done all of those things. So there's no reason that I can't do this. And I believe that because I had given myself the experiences that I needed to learn that and really believe that. So to wrap it up, courage kind of acts at the micro level, you know, the minute to minute facing the fear, competence acts in more of a midder, mid range there, midder, listen to me, what kind of word is that? A, sort of the middle of the range. Confidence is a much bigger picture thing. So you're gonna have to find your courage, do it when afraid, I know you can, to start to build a sense of competence in each one of these individual recovery tasks, whatever it happens to be in your context. And then confidence is when you push that competence into a wider and wider uh, uh, smorgasbord, if you will, of events, right? We want varied experiences and varied events and varied context in our, in our recovery. That is what builds your confidence that when you get to the point where you're building confidence and your confidence in your recovery is going up and up and up, that is that durable recovery. So competence is about taking your recovery and making it portable across multiple tasks and contexts and situations. Confidence is what makes your recovery very durable. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about broad and deep recovery. We're going to talk about uh, portability and durability. Talk about all that stuff. We, got to, we still have a ton of stuff to do. I've been at this for seven years now, and I'm not running out of things to talk about. So plenty of things coming up. All right. So that is the three C's of recovery, of recovery, courage, competence, confidence. Use that as a conceptual framework. Understand why it is you're doing these things. Understand why it is this crazy dude with a hat from New York is telling you to be courageous and knows that you can. This is how it all fits together, right? So it's not a perfect explanation. And again, it doesn't work like it. it's not math, it's not perfect. But generally speaking, on the big picture, that's how these three C's, these three concepts fit together, right? So there you go. That is episode number 178. I will play you out at the end. Listen, it's Afterglow by Ben Drake. You can find Ben at bendrakemusic.com. Thank you, Ben, for writing the song, for letting me use it. It's meaningful to him and now to me, for sure. So check that out. Uh, if you are listening, oh, by the way, if you want full show notes on this podcast, or you want to sort of just find links to my books and all that stuff, uh, just go to the anxious truth.com slash 178. And I'll have the full show notes from this episode and links to all my stuff. And again, if you're watching, uh, if you're watching on Spotify or YouTube, awesome Spotify video podcast, If you're watching on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel, it really helps. And if you're listening on iTunes, or some platform that lets you rate and review this podcast, then leave a five star rating. If you're watching or listening, then I'm saying I'm guessing you're digging it. Leave a five-star rating, take a few minutes and write a paragraph or two review about why you like this podcast and it will help other people find it. So thanks a lot, guys. I always appreciate your time and attention. 23 minutes, not too shabby. I'm out. I will see you next week. Enjoy Afterglow for a little bit. And remember, this is the way. You got the feeling that you're going to win. Yeah, you're doing fine. Now in the city and you're living fast. No looking back or dwelling on the past. You know you'll never get another chance. So go and live your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push through the pressure.